Bees work hard for their pollen, but did you know your flowers are working just as hard to attract bees? And it starts with long distance advertising. Bees have pretty poor and pixelated distance vision, so flowers use bright colors and yummy smells to intrigue them. But as a bee gets closer, things get much more interesting. See that leopard looking pattern? That's called a nectar guide, and it literally points the bees right to the nectar. Let's see that again in slow motion. Look at how that bee plops down once it sees that pattern. Okay, I won't describe what you're seeing there now. This is a family show. But I think you can probably tell where the nectar is. And some nectar guides are completely invisible to you and me. Because bees see color a little differently from us. They can't see the color red. Which is maybe why this little red crab spider is hiding in the flowers trying to eat everybody. That was close. But the bees can see UV light color you and I can only imagine. And if you look at some flowers through a UV filter, old patterns suddenly appear that you and I are completely blind to. These UV bullseye markings lead right to the nectar. Scientists even did an experiment to take the petals off and turn them around so the bullseye was at the outside. And sure enough, the bees went to the outside of the flower looking for nectar. So why would a flower go through all this trouble to help the bees find their nectar? Well, flowers need a little help to become pollinated to transfer pollen from the male stamen to the female pistil, and they offer nectar as a reward to the bees who are willing to do it. Some flowers, like our rhododendron here, make particularly intricate patterns that actually help the bees to learn. If a bee gets a yummy reward from one of these nectar guides, they'll seek out more flowers with that same pattern, which benefits the flowers since it keeps the bees coming back to pollinate. But can a bee really remember a complex pattern like this? Turns out, yes, Bees have been shown to even be able to recognize different human faces. And they consolidate long-term memories during their sleep, the same way you and I do. They're even thought to have dreams. A second dimension flowers use as a nectar guide is flower shape. See how the rhododendron flower has a crease right down the middle of that nectar guide? After a bee lands, they can lap up nectar from this channel, no searching required. As I was looking around my yard, I also noticed that my flowering dogwood trees have these cup bracts that lead bees right down to the tiny flowers below. And notice what happened when one of those little bract petals was flopped over. Look what else our clever rhododendron does with shape. It's made itself into a little bee bench. The bees follow the nectar guide, which forces them to perch right on the stamens while they drink. They're literally standing right in the pollen. What a design. And when they climb on and off, they'll likely bump the pistil and voila, flower pollinated. Another invisible guide flowers use is electromagnetism. Flowers have a slight negative charge, whereas bumblebees have a positive charge. So the bees can sense the electric field around a flower in the last few seconds as they approach. And when they land for a snack, they neutralize the flower's charge for a little while. Bees have been shown to favor the negatively charged flowers because this means they're more likely to have had more time to resupply their nectar since the last visitor. That charge difference between the bee and flower can cause pollen to literally jump onto the bees before they've even landed. These flowers are persistent. And here's a whopper. This rhododendron we've been watching, it puts poison in its nectar a neurotoxin that can impair or even kill some bees. If you're interested in history, look up mad honey in the Roman army sometime. Why would a flower poison its pollinators? Well, the poison isn't toxic to all bees. Have you noticed it's mostly big carpenter bees and bumblebees on these rhodi flowers? Turns out the neurotoxin doesn't bother them at all. Instead, it targets our smaller native bees like minor bees, bees that don't fit on that little bee bench. Nectar is extremely energy intensive to produce, so if you can't pollinate, then no nectar for you. And that's what we call a specialist plant-insect relationship. I've been working on redesigning my pollinator garden to foster some more of these types of relationships. Watch this video next to check it out.